I have spent a considerable part of my time last week reaching out to law professors, faculty members, and people from the academe. Mahaba-haba ang aming mga naging mga kwentuhan at isa sa mga pinakamalaking takeaways ko sa aming mga calls ay sila din pala kapatid ay mayroong ding mga agam-agam sa pagpasok ng bagong academic year para sa law school. Malinaw sa aming pag-uusap na tatlo ang kanilang mga pinagpipili ang modes of instruction. Una, naroon pa rin ang usual recitation sa law school through online classes. Platforms like Zoom and Google Meet make it easy for professors to accommodate virtually any number of students whom they can watch and monitor just as they have done in physical classes in law school. The problem with this arrangement is that if they are running older devices or if they are older and less comfortable with the use of technology, it's a recipe for disaster. Dagdag mo pa dito kapatid ang unreliable nature ng ating mga internet connections. Another concern they have with this arrangement is that they are unable to accurately gauge the performance of a student during recitation. Napakadali kasi para sa maraming law students ang mag-ninja moves na may binabasang materials sa ibang device o sa mismong device na gamit nila. Off camera, hindi na alam ng professor kung ano ang nangyayari sa'yo, kapatid. Second, walang non-verbal clues na nakukuha ang professor. Maaring nambobola ka lang pero hindi ka niya makita. Maaring hindi mo alam ang sagot at palusot mo lang na Chapi si ma'am o biglang sira ang audio mo kapatid. Wala silang kasiguraduhan pagdating dito. Finally, and I feel this is a perfectly valid point, when it comes to online classes, students can easily excuse themselves from turning on their cameras because of intermittent internet connections. Pwede nilang sabihin na mahina po ang net judge, pero kung audio lang po ay okay naman. The problem here is that the professor is unable to check and see if you're truly listening kapatid. Meron kasing nagpapatay na lang ng kamera tapos kung ano-ano na ang ginagawa. Hindi naman nakikinig. Meron din namang magpapacheck lang ng attendance at AFK na for the next few hours. The second method professors have opted to teach their classes is by providing videos of their lectures for their students. This is probably the most democratic, most equitable approach given that some students have decent download speeds but poor upload speeds. Dadagdagan na lang yan ng konting quizzes, essays at digests ay GG na sana kapatid. However, most professors struggle to deliver lectures in their best possible form because they rely primarily on having a live studio audience or having a room full of people whose collective reactions and energy breeds life into the lecturer. Further, some older professors also struggle with the use of technology. They rely primarily on staff members and even if they wanted to do video lectures, the production, lighting, audio and video editing, if any, are simply outside of their comfort zones. Meron din namang nakapag-upload ng kanika nilang mga lectures kapatid pero hindi talaga professional lang dating. Naroong kita na naka-shorts lang si sir o medyo naglalag dahil marami-rami na rin pala ang kanyang nainom. Meron mang kaya namang makapag-lecture on camera pero takot na takot silang manakawan ng kanilang mga intellectual property. Finally, the last mode of learning that the professors are looking into is the assignment of readings and cases for digest. This last mode is best used as a supplement pero pinag-aaralan din ito bilang option na medyo demokratiko at pwedeng para sa lahat ng uri ng internet connections. DSL man yan o mobile data lang. The last mode in my opinion suffers from the fatal flaw in that law students are already tasked with reading the law. Some students, especially those in their second or first years, simply are not equipped to learn the law on their own. Marami pa sa atin ang nakakabasa lang ng batas, nakakabasa ng textbook, pero walang naiintindihan. O kung meron mang naiintindihan, ay wala namang naaalala. Para bang dumadaan lang ang letters at para sa akin kapatid, this is certainly no way for us to learn the law. Given our circumstances and no vaccine yet in sight, I'd love to share with you the adjustments we all have to make in the coming academic year for law school. Coming right up! Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted 
every Friday. Let me begin by discussing the mental aspect of law school. Just as in previous semesters, let me tell you kapatid, that law school is pretty much still a mental game. Walang bago dyan. However, while the importance of your foundation is still there, there are a ton of other extraneous variables that we have to account for. Our mental health has collectively taken a deep dive since the middle of March. Naroon na na nag-aalala tayo na tuwing lalabas ka o may lalabas na miyembro ng ating mga pamilya, naroon lagi ang agam-agam na may inuwi na pa siyang COVID-19. Meron ding pangamba na baka asymptomatic tayo at tayo pala ay nagiging sanhi ng sakit or worse, kamatayan ng ibang tao. These thoughts and the million other negative thoughts that pop into our consciousness can easily drain us mentally. Okay lang yan kapatid na mag-aalala ka. Okay lang kapatid na medyo may panic ka. As I've mentioned in earlier episodes, worrying is like riding a rocking chair. You can move all you want but you're never getting anywhere. I'm not invalidating your overthinking kapatid but my advice for you is to acknowledge these thoughts and let them pass through you. Let them go. We have to find ways to cope. Second, law school in the coming academic year is going to take a higher level of discipline. Naroon na na kailangan nating piliting magbasa, mag-aral at unawain ang batas gayong walang physical classes, walang recitation, wala ang pressure kaya naroon na ang tukso na maging petics. To this, I must hasten to add kapatid that your turn to take the bar exams is coming. Hindi man gayong taon, hindi man sa February, hindi man next year. Pero darating at darating yan sa mga ganit Itong pagkakataon, paghuhugutan mo ng lakas at tiwala sa sarili ang lahat ng pagkakataon na inaral mo ang batas kahit hindi kailangan, kahit hindi ka matatawag, kahit alam mong walang pasok mamaya. Further, there's that thing we have about Zoom meetings and Google Meet. As I've mentioned in a previous episode, online meetings drain so much more of our mental energy. A camera is staring down at us the whole time. Sama mo na dito ang feelings of self-consciousness and the constant feeling of being watched. Hindi ganito ang pakiramdam natin pag upo sa classroom. Sa klase, pwedeng kumain, dumaldal o yumuko sa libro. Pwedeng tumingin sa bintana, lumingon sa katabi o magbukas ng cellphone. Sa online meetings, conscious tayo, aware tayo, na aware si judge na hindi tayo nakatitig sa kanya. This, I feel, is one of the things we all have to watch out for in the days and weeks ahead. Finally, professors are collectively figuring out the best possible way for them to conduct exams. One option is through proctored online exams, which requires the use of at least two devices. In this arrangement, a student must take the exam either on printed answer sheets or through another device like a laptop or desktop. A second device is used as monitoring for the proctors. Meaning, kapatid, kailangan kita ng professor mo ang laman ng monitor mo para matiyak niya na wala kang ibang windows na bukas. Kailangan niyang makita na walang laman ng desk mo kundi kamay at panulat lang if required. For this arrangement, a student is also tasked with sending scanned copies or pictures of his or her answer sheet within the time allotted to take the exam. Again, extra work siya para sa atin kapatid, but this is the best way for professors to gauge our understanding of the law. Imagine kapatid na sa isang on-site exam, meron at meron pa rin tahasang nangungopya at nangungodigo sa mga exam. Kahit may mga nag-iikot na proctor, kahit kahit na may CCTV sa examination room, hudi lang ay okay na sila. Kung may mga instances na ganito at sila ay nakakalusot, then it becomes even more necessary for our professors to be more strict about exams. Others, however, have taken the opposite route. Take home ang exam, open everything, pero ikaw na ang bahala kung matututo ka o hindi. This brings me to my next point. The new school year requires a much, much higher level of discipline. For the next semester, we will be studying from our homes. This has caused the physical boundaries between work, school, and rest to be blurred. People are struggling to be productive or to remain productive for longer periods of time. There was a time kapatid na pag-uwi natin ng bahay ay alam nating pahinga na, 
paglabas ng classroom, pagdaan sa chapel ng school at pag beep ng ID natin sa barrier ng school, yes, uwi na. Okay lang maging lutang, pagod, sabaw at tumawa sa mga recitation natin na pwedeng-pwedeng maging mga meme. Pagdating sa bahay, pagkaligo, alam nating may lisensya na tayong magpahinga, matulog at dahil bukas, laban na naman. Ganon din ang pagbibihis bago pumasok sa klase. Alam mo kapatid na sa bawat pahid ng lip tint na roon na ang nagbabadyang recitation. These lines have all been blurred during the pandemic. It takes a much, much higher level of discipline to be able to go through the same amount of books, cases, and readings. There is less external pressure from the physical cues we get from our routines that it becomes much, much easier for us to cave in to internal pressures. Ang mga law students ay likas na marupok. Konting bulungan lang na may program sa school ay hindi na yan magbabasa. Kumulimlim lang ng konti o maulan lang sa paggising ay hindi na yan sisipaging magbasa. Naroon na ang tukso na mag-FB hanggang may lumabas na announcement na walang pasok. Kung hindi uubra doon ay text o tawag sa bidel na magre-request na wala na lang pasok sir baka bumaha, baka traffic. The next semester might not feature the same free cuts or the same breaks from the action. Katulad ng dati, to this, I offer a few suggestions. Even in past episodes, I have always recommended that you set apart a fixed space in the known universe to serve as your study space. It does not have to be much. It can even be facing a wall or window in your bedroom, so long as your peripheral vision does not see your bed. Kama ang ating pinakamalaking kalaban sa law school. A fixed study space will increase your productivity many times over versus having to read on your kitchen table, on your living room, or any other shared space you may have in your house. Mahirap kasi ang may katabi. Kahit may nanonood lang ng TikTok sa background mo, kapatid, babagal na ang pag-absorb mo ng iyong readings. Your fixed study space will also be the place where you will be attending your classes. I sincerely appreciate one student who has made the effort of enclosing her study space with curtains. I felt that her video stood out from the rest of the class. Kahit maliit, makalat at masikip ang space niya, nagmumukhang professional lang dating dahil sa mga kurtina. My recommendation kapatid is to treat your study space as if it were hallowed ground. Do not start reading in the morning without taking a quick shower. Approach your space as if it were your office. The mechanical act of showering sometimes is enough to trick our minds and bodies that we are entering a new space. Nag-game na nga at papasok ka na sa iyong opisina at magsisimula ka ng kumayod para sa pangarap mong maging abogado. While NCR and nearby provinces have once again been placed under MECQ, this should be no excuse for you kapatid not to take care of your physical health. Sabi nga ni Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roques, sa panahon ng pandemya ay mas kailangang palakasin natin ang ating mga katawan. Buti pa siya ay may legs day pa. Samantalang tayo, maghapon lang nakahiga. All of us have different ways of taking care of our bodies. Others run, some ride their bikes to work. Others are happy with yoga and skipping ropes. For me, it's always been lifting heavy things. For what it's worth, kapatid, our ability to perform mentally will only be as good as our chassis. You can't read if you're sick or too weak to even stand up. Invest in your body now as much as you're investing on your mind. Sayang kapatid ang pagpapagod mo sa pangarap mong maging abogado kung ilang taon ka pa lang sa practice ay magkakasakit ka naman sa puso. Finally, there's that aspect of our faith. One of the biggest effects of the pandemic on my personal life is that I miss being in a huge crowd of people who are united in worship. Sabi nga ng kapatid ko, parang kulang na kulang na daw ang kanyang pagkatao ngayong hindi kami nakakapagsimba. If you feel the same kapatid, then let me tell you right now, you are not alone. Noong panahon ng ECQ na nagkaroon ng pagbabanta na magugutom na tayo, na wala na tayong mabibiling pagkain ay... Hindi naman nangyari. Hindi tayo nagutom. Ay di ga ikaw ay nakainom pa noong tinatawag nilang diagonal coffee. Lumipas ang ECQ at MECQ ay hindi ka naman nawalan ng trabaho. Meron ka pa rin sweldo na bumubuhay sa iyo. Nasa higit 100,000 na Pilipinong nagpositibo sa COVID-19 ay ikaw kapatid ay nananatiling malakas, malusog at medyo tumataba pa. Hindi ka nagkasakit kapatid and that means the world for you and me. And that is why as we approach this whole new semester for law school, I invite you now to just close your eyes, put your hands close to your chest, 
and say these words after me. Father, we come to you now as your humble and grateful children. The past few months have seen the country ravaged by hunger, poverty, and all the other effects of the pandemic. Yet, here we are. We stand firm in your presence, full of faith, full of hope, and full of grateful anticipation of the new semester. You have delivered us through the pandemic, through our last semester, and through everything we had to go through ahead of the coming school year. We acknowledge your love for us and it is only by your greatest love that we have made it this far. Here we are at the very brink of the next chapter of our law school dreams, eager and waiting for your supplication waiting for your guidance, waiting for your providence as we set to conquer our personal demons of poor discipline, negative thoughts, overthinking, and all of our doubts and fears. Whatever it is that's holding us back, cast them away, O God. Let there be nothing in us but love for you. Make our every thought, our every action, our every habit, make our very persons all for your loving service. In a special way, we pray for all those who are sick from this pandemic. We speak words of healing. We command every cell of their bodies, every tissue, every organ, and every system to be rid of this disease. And in the silence of our hearts, we also remember those who have lost their lives. Heal the hearts of those they have left behind. Bring them comfort and aid in their sadness, mourning, and grief. Help them see the hope of tomorrow and embrace them with the warmth of your love. Heal them of their regrets, of words left unsaid, of deeds left undone. We also pray for our frontliners and all those who stand guard between us and this disease. Give them strength of bodies, clarity of minds, and fortitude as they continue to drive back this disease and keep us from all harm. As we start this brand new semester for law school, we also pray for our professors. Bless and keep each and every one of them, O God. We pray for their strength and health as they bless each one of us with their knowledge, training, and experience ahead of the new school year. We pray that you give them the discernment as to the best platforms for each and every one of us. In a very special way, I also want to lift up to you, O God, the new school year for my friend. Give my friend the mental ability to get through this semester with flying colors. Give my friend the strength, the fortitude, and the discipline that my friend needs to become the best version of his or herself. We know that the new semester isn't going to be easy. We all have our doubts that online law school does not work or the methodology isn't proven. But all of these are the things that are holding us back. Help us keep our eyes on the prize. Help us keep our eyes on the goal. Remind us always of the beautiful ending to all of our law school stories and we know that they will all end with us taking our oaths, signing the role of attorneys and bringing justice where there is none. All in your perfect time. All of this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and Amen. Salamat kapatid kung inabot mo ang ending ng episode na to. This episode is very special for me kapatid because it's the 100th episode. Ibig sabihin na for at least 100 Fridays I have found a way to write, animate, and edit a new episode for you. And for the past 100 Fridays you have graciously shared your time with me. If you would like us to share another 100 Fridays together, please type yes in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Karma and I will see you next Friday.